Why conservatism is for conservatives? There seems to be nothing more natural to humankind than the drive to universalize. We like to share our ideas and feelings. If we like or believe something, we want to share it. We want and even expect others to embrace our experience. This is especially so when a person embraces a new idea or experience. The newly loved, the new conservative, the new Christian, and even the new communist want to explain how they met this new person, faith, or came to a new understanding. Invariably we find the experiences of the other person is not identical to ours. The other person may wish to correct our impressions, tweak our ideas and teach us how to better understand what we have experienced. We want others to share our experience, but identical experiences rarely happen. Our experiences are to some degree our own as the experiences of other people remain their own. Experiences and ideas are not easily transferable. Impressions are not easily duplicated using words. The subjective nature of our ideas ought to be expected. We are not clones and every experience can be interpreted in infinite number of ways. Conservatism is not for everyone. We need to understand that. There is no world in which everyone is conservative. There will always be division. There will always be dissent. Conservative ought to understand that. Conservatism is uniquely designed to suit conservatives. In understanding this truth, we ought to be wary of adopting liberal positions and liberal policy when it comes to dealing with the issue of division. Conservatism is principled. We do not just favor smaller governments. We want personal accountability. There is no negotiated settlement in which smaller governments can be provided if there is no personal accountability. Regardless of how small the state is, the state reduces accountability. It must or it has no function. You may negotiate a settlement with a robber about how much you will give him, this still means you have been robbed, just not as much as you might have been, had you not negotiated a lesser payment. If conservatism is a theocracy, there is no negotiation that will not compromise conservatism because any settlement will compromise the theocratic system. A liberal is willing to negotiate. Liberals will agree to reduce the upper tax bracket from 70% to 40%. Regardless of the amount levied taxes are still being paid. So long as the state can levy taxes the ownership model being used is closer to a joint venture of lease agreement than ownership. The state has no right to any part of the world. How does the state assign property licenses then claim a share of any income produced by the property owner? The state represents a silent partner in the business with a lien on the assets of the business. The state serves to divest God of his holdings. This is how the devil attains to the high seat of God. There are only two states of being we can inhabit, or two states of consciousness. These are literally two forms or types of humanity. This division is real, and it cannot be erased. It is fundamental. We are either God or we are the servants of God in the most fundamental of senses. But the servants of God are not all servants, some are alienated from God. This is the two states we are most concerned about here. But mankind faces a problem. Not everyone is satisfied with the role of servant and aspire to the role of gods or demigod. If one is not a servant one is God, but because we cannot be God, we make ourselves into demigods. Demigods are not ruled by God. They are not governed by a theocracy. Demigods acquire self-rule, they embrace democracy. The world is owned by God. Democracy helps to transfer power from God to the secular authorities charged with representing humanity's interests. 
The method of transferring this wealth to the liberal state is the tax system. It does not matter the argument made or the justification provided. The creator has something parasites want, and the parasites find a way to claim and acquire it. Conservatives do not think they are entitled to anything. Conservatives think they are human and get what they earn. No one owes us anything. If we want something, we work for it. That means the person who created the thing we want must be paid market value for it. This is why the mechanism of the market are important to conservatives. But the market is not liberal friendly. To be a liberal is to engage in socialism. If there is no social justice being guided by a social agenda, there is no socialism and we do not have liberalism. What is rarely discussed is liberalism as a system or worldview. Liberalism is considered to be a political philosophy centered on liberty. However, when we look at the characteristics of liberalism it has more to do with economics than philosophy. Freedom has to be paid for and if you are the one paying for it, you are not free. To be free physically requires resources and it requires power. One is not free if what one has and can do is controlled by another person. This creates a dilemma. We cannot be free without resources and power. This is a trap. If we have resources but no power, the wealth we have belongs to someone else. If we have power but no resources, we serve the person who has power. In either case we are subjects of the state. Liberals are subjects of a state. Freedom is an illusion. It is not the ideal many think it to be. But if freedom is not the ultimate good, what is the first order principle philosophers seek? The only good is God. The only good for man is to obey God and seek to be, as much as possible, like God. To live in a theocracy is the highest possible good. Liberals want freedom, but the only way they can be free is as debtors. We always end up owing God. The question is if the debt will be forgiven or not. There are only two things in this world. One is affixed to God, the other is attached to man. God created physical reality. These are assets, they are a different class of thing compared to equity. This is the most important thing you can take from this topic. Man adds value to assets to create equity. Equity is created by man through the use of and manipulation of assets. We do not own the assets but we are the owners of the value we create. OG is a native who chips out arrowheads. His neighbors pay him a rabbit for an arrowhead. With the invention of money, the precision by which value can be determined multiplied many fold. When goods and services are priced, labor is given a value. In monetary terms we are good when we create things of value. We are bad when we consume what we cannot pay for. Good is the value of the equity our work produces in the service of God. This idea of good poses a problem for liberals and the liberal state. Neither are able to pay the costs of their actions, done in the name of social justice according to the liberal social agenda. In fact, their idea of what is good is incompatible with the conservative view of good. In the liberal mind doing good requires consuming equity they did not produce. They justify their sin by claiming their actions benefit a third party. Conservatism is for conservatives because the nature of conservatism is grounded in a cash-based economy. Conservatives pay our own way with the equity we produce working for God using assets that belong to him. Liberalism is parasitism. Parasites are parasites because they consume more than they produce. That is their nature, howsoever one justifies it. Conservatives live good lives because they live productive lives. 
Conservatives can pay for what they consume. Good is not an option for parasites or those dependent on the work of the good. Good has value. To be good is to be a creator of value. God creates assets man produces equity. God is good and the good of man is a reflection of the goodness created by God. Value is earned it is not inherent. To be good divides one from those who are not good. To be good is to be conservative because good is to earn value. This is why conservatism is linked to economics. To be conservative is to be conservative because we conserve what is good. To be good is to have value because we create value from what is good. In the human realm to have value is to be economically viable, productive and liquid and to be good.